Yo, yo, today I'm going to teach you guys how to make this plant growth in Blender. It's using geonodes for the actual flowers and the growth itself. So if you don't know anything about geonodes, it might be a little bit tough, but I'll try and explain it. So for this scene, I just use four different plant models. You can really use whatever model you want. I just use these flowers from the Bag of Pie add-on. They're pretty high quality and they have a bunch of different plants. And then I just have a stump that I used. It just looked good if something were to grow off of it. So. We'll be using this any type of typology is pretty much good you just want a little bit so the actual model can bend and move around so easiest way to tell that is just proportional editing and just see how it moves around if you twist around one of the vertices so this is good topology for something like this so we're just going to open up a geometry nodes and how we're going to be moving around this and how you can move around other objects to using this is just set position you can see it moves it around and it's a vector base so it's going to be using all the vertices so we'll add a noise texture and then we're going to add a vector math too and we're just going to duplicate this two more times we're going to make a multiply here turn this one into a subtract and then turn this one into scale okay and then we're going to add a normal math node normal math node and a position node and then just a scene time you don't need them it's just it animates it by itself they'll so plug the scene time into the first value on the add down here and plug the position into the vector on the multiply here and just make all these bottom numbers here change these to 0.5 and this is fine at 0.5 you can change this around later if you want plug the vector into the vector and change the noise texture to 4D and plug the value from this add into the W. And we're just, I forgot, we're just gonna change this add to multiply really quickly. So it's two multiplies, one vector and one normal. And then we're gonna take the color from this noise texture and plug it into the vector here and change all these to 0.52 and plug the subtract into the scale and plug the scale into the offset. Go into the scale here and just drag it down and add a color ramp. You can see that's doing a little bit, but we're gonna wanna add a gradient texture next. And for the vector, add a vector rotate. And then we can just copy and paste this position node from up here and plug that into the vector. So you can see it's starting to work. This side is static and this side is moving. We just need to rotate this by 90. So the axis is down here, just change the angle to 90 and turn this axis to zero and turn the middle axis to one. So now you can see the bottom staying still. So this is pretty much the geo node for the plant. Um, the way that you would change the settings on this on how much it's wiggling, it's just the scale. So the scale is going to be how much, so low scale, it'll be slowly waving high scale it's going to be freaking out if you want to do some sort of time lapse i would put up the detail a bit because it looks more like it's kind of growing and if you just want something blowing in the wind i would go with a low detail like that you can always turn down this and now if you have a bunch of flowers which i recommend because it's gonna look a little bit weird if you only have one scattered because they'll all be moving in the same way um, let's just say you have another one here, you duplicate it, just make a new copy of the group for this geo node, so it's not, not going to translate the same settings you're changing on here. You can plug in the group input here to the scale and then also the detail and you can change it over here without having to go into the geometry nodes. So you can change this a bit and you can see now they're not moving in the same direction. Otherwise they would just be like this, they both have the same movement. So I did that with four different plants and they all have different movements now. So this is what I'm going to be using to instance. So once you have all those and you have different geo nodes for all of them, just put them in a group. I just named it flowers. And then we have our stump here. So I'm going to add a geo nodes to the stump and I will go into distribute points, points on faces and then we'll go instance on points. Okay, so the instance on points is going to just instance our flowers on each of these points that we just created. 
So these points are going to be on the faces. You can also put this on this option, um, which you can control a bit more so they don't overlap. But with something like flowers, you won't really notice that too much. So we can just use the random. I might have to up the density a bit later, but we'll play with that later. Um, so I'm just going to grab the flower group, put it in here. And you want to click separate children, reset children. And then on the instance on points node, just click pick instance. This is just going to separate them a bit more. I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. And then we'll go join geometry. So we can actually see our log and how they connect. Okay, so if you don't click pick instance, they're all just going to be in groups together. They're not really going to be separated. And then separate children. Again, sort of the same thing. They kind of stick together. And then reset children. We'll just kind of make them stick to the faces they're supposed to be on. So you can see a lot of them are floating here. Click reset children. And they're all stuck to the mesh now. That's how we want it. And uh, now I'll start working on the proximity so we can get them to grow. Just one other thing too, you're going to want to take the rotation from the faces. So each of these faces, the way that they're pointing out. So for example, this face is pointing out that way. If something grows, it'll point out that way. Instead, right now, everything's just growing upwards, which we don't really want. So I'm going to take the rotation here and plug it into the instance on points. So now you can see they're all growing out their individual ways in which we want, but we don't want them to be growing down because it doesn't really make much sense. So I'm going to go rotate Euler, change this by negative 90, and then we'll do negative 180 on this, and then we'll change this to local. You can see now all of them are sort of growing upwards. Okay, so now we're going to do the proximity. So take an empty, make sure it's not in that group. I'll just put it over here for now. I'm going to take that empty and drag it into the geo nodes and then I'm going to add a position right up there I'm going to add a vector math a map range and then a color ramp as well so position into vector Change this also to distance up at the top here. And we're going to want to go with this empty that we pick, put the location in here. Okay, value into value and result into factor and color into scale because we're going to be scaling them with that. So now you can see when you move it around, it scales them, but this isn't really how you would control it. So I'm just going to invert this color ramp, switch these around. Now you see when we bring it in, it starts to grow. Bring it over here and we can affect these numbers just a little bit. And I'm also gonna up the density quite a bit. I'll go like 150. So you can see, start to grow. So you have all those wiggling plants. And you also have the proximity that goes over and makes them grow. So there's just a few more things that you can add to make this a bit more realistic and a little bit more detail. So we'll drag these out. Also, I'm just going to play around with this a bit more so we can, something like that. That looks a lot better. Just play around with the settings here. It'll, it'll depend on your object. It won't necessarily be the exact same. Try and get something to where there's an ease, it's not so much just a sharp cut from growing to not growing. And I'm just going to add a scale instances. And then I'm going to add a random node, random value. Change this to like 0.5, we don't want it to be exactly nothing for the scale. Put it in there, so now these are just going to be a little bit different. So now they're not all going to be the exact same size. And just one last thing you can do is a rotate instances and we're going to want to use both the x and the z so i'm just going to keyframe all these and then by 150 maybe i'll turn this around turn this down a bit maybe turn this this way keyframe everything that'll just turn them around a bit more and give it more life 
So when you're animating this empty, I think it, it works best if you put it close. And then at 150, about like there. And now if you select both of those and just stretch them out, you can get more of a growth pattern. Also adjust the scale. So also another thing that you can do if you want to organize this and make it a bit easier to go through, separate these nodes just a bit. So we know this right here is our proximity, so just control J and then F2 on your keyboard. That prox. And this will be instances. And then for the flowers. We have the gradient here, so control J, gradient, and then you can control J up here, and this is the wave. And that's pretty much it. You can play around with the materials after that and the lighting. If you want to do something with the camera like you saw in the first video there, an easy trick is just spawn in a camera, bring it up a little bit, and go into the transform properties and just zero all the rotations. So it's looking down and then you can just spawn in an empty and take the camera and parent it to the empty. So now if we take this empty and we rotate it around, the camera follows it. So you can do some pretty smooth animations. So just something like that, something simple, rotate it around, change the keyframes to linear and make sure the keyframes aren't starting in your, in your timeline. You want the keyframes to be outside the timeline Otherwise, you're going to get a sort of like a start. So you can see there it starts. If you have it outside the timeline and you start, it already starts on a smooth motion. Yeah. So looks pretty good. And uh, add something like a light on the other side, just in an area. Pump it up a bit in the power. And what I did for the background was just a normal background all the way to white and then on strength of two and then I just turned off the film on transparent turned off the background and then I just put in a background in post effects and when you do the camera just make sure you also have some sort of depth of field on yeah, a little bit of depth of field goes a long way so you can do a simple simple camera and lighting setup like that it's a pretty easy project so if you guys have any questions just throw them in the comments and I'll try and answer them and I'll see you guys in the next video.